So for her PhD work, Dr. Hong Lu, now a professor in environmental studies, looked at Camichrysta chiensis, a beautiful pea plant of the lower keys, and looked, studied the effect of fires at different times of the year on the vital rates of this plant. In the pine rocklands of the lower Florida Keys, shown here in this box, pine rocklands occur on some of the larger islands that have a freshwater lens below the island. And the pine rocklands there, just as here in South Florida, are a fire-dependent habitat. Mecrista lineata variety kiensis, or the big pine partridge pea, is a very pretty member of the understory flora in these pine rockland forests. Its distribution is in the pine rocklands. And here's a little GIS map, the pine rocklands on Big Pine Key, shown in green. You can also see that there's quite a bit of developed area on this key, and this interferes sometimes with fires being able to uh, maintain the pine rockland. So there was a big study done. Hong was a research assistant in this project, trying to determine the best season of burning for proper management of these forests. Typically, fires in southern Florida are caused by lightning in the early wet season. <clears throat> but Fires have often been set by management in the winter time when it's a, a little easier to predict it will be dry and conditions are a little cooler and more comfortable. Even though lightning fire is likely, it's possible too that anthropogenic fires throughout the history of this region may have happened during all seasons. So to determine the effects of fires at different times of year on the population biology of this plant, Hong looked at annual survival, percentage of plants reproducing, and the number of seedlings per census plot. She looked at the other things too in black, but these data I'm going to show you. We'll talk just about these things. On this map, the little light green squares show different blocks receiving different fire treatments that she used for her monitoring. In each block, there were three plots, one that got a fire in the wet season, one that got a fire in the dry season, and one that had no fire. To collect data, she looked at the number of stems per plant, the length of the stems, numbers of flowers and fruit, and how many seeds were produced. She used random plots, and additional non-random plots to make sure she had enough individuals, and did a census from before the fires to up to three years after the fires. So here's a life cycle diagram for the partridge pea, from seed to seedling to vegetative individual to reproductive adult, vegetative adult maybe I should say. So for each of these stages, there's a probability of remaining the same. Because sometimes seeds don't germinate, so they just end up in the seed bank. But then the transition probabilities of moving from seedling, seed to seedling, seedling to vegetative, and vegetative to reproductive individual. And only the reproductive individuals have fecundity or produce seed. So for, this was the big question, how many seeds remained seeds and how many transitioned to seedlings and how many transitioned from seedlings to different individuals. So Hong's data were collected for all these different um, sites and she could generate site treatment and year specific matrices for each one of these sites. To follow seeds and their transition to seedlings, she put seeds in little fireproof mesh bags and observed when they germinated. And you can see right in the middle of this, 
There's a little seedling germinating through the bag. She also sowed seeds into plots and then looked for seedlings to estimate germination, births, and deaths, and also seedling survivorship. She interpreted these with different fertility scenarios, getting estimations from germination and sown, sown seedlings. She had eight different scenarios that she um, got from data where she just threw the seeds in the plots versus those where she had them in bags. And then plotting those through the years of the study, all of these scenarios gave different predictions and what she actually observed is shown with this solid line with diamonds here. Closer to the first or fourth scenarios, or I guess she decided it was the third, the sown optimistic fertility scenario was that which best described what was happening. So she could use that to fill in the question marks in this Kami Krista Kiensis life cycle. And then using elasticity analyses, she could figure out proportional changes in lambda to changes in the matrix elements, where E is elasticity. And it's a measure of the importance of each matrix element to the finite population growth rate. So the elasticity matrix can be summarized into three categories, fecundity, the light green numbers in the upper right hand portion, survival, staying the same, not dying, and growth, moving from one category to the next in black. So here she has a plot of lambda versus elasticity and three different plots for survival, growth, and fecundity. Fecundity and growth increasing, survival decreasing. And the um, amount with which the line descri is described by all the points, or the way that the line describe best describes the scatter of the points, or I am stumbling here, is the R squared or correlation. Through all that, Hong could conclude that time since fire has a significant effect on the population growth rate. And for this plant, the big pine partridge pea, the highest lambda or population growth rate was seen in recently burned sites. The effect of fire season was most pronounced during the year of the burn, didn't make as much of a difference in subsequent years, and the season of fire didn't seem to make that big of a difference for this particular plant.